Hi, I'm Douglas Wonder, and I'm a jewelry designer and a metal artist. And today I'd like to show you how to make a bookmark. And we're going to use some very basic tools that you find around the house, like for example, a drill, and then some common tools that you use when making jewelry and other metal objects. And then we're going to also I'm also going to demonstrate on how to do some very basic drawing with very simple tools like this, a pencil and a straight edge. And then the material that we're going to use is copper. So why don't we get started? This is the first step and it's drawing out your bookmark. I do everything on paper and this is a good way to do something because you can visually look at something before you commit it to metal. And I just basically cut out, draw out a rectangle. Now moving forward, I start to draw out the basic design of my bookmark. And the choice that I made is doing somewhat of a random geometric design. Now keep in mind, Anybody can do anything they like, but this is just something that I really like, just abstract geometry. I continue forward by shading in some of the lines that I'm going to eventually cut out, and I just want to signal to myself what it is that represent the negative space. And then I do some highlights by stenciling in some round circles. The next step is you want is we want to mount the design to a piece of metal. So basically, you just cut this piece out like so. And then you glue it to the piece of metal. And I use spray adhesive and I just go on the back of it and spray the back and then take that and put that down on my piece of metal. Just like this. Now we need to cut out our design with a jeweler saw. The first thing we need to do is put a blade in the saw frame. Okay, holding the saw frame by the handle you go ahead and put your little saw blade into the little, loosen this up a little bit, and then put it into the little area, the little slot here. And again, you want to make sure those teeth are pointed back toward you. And then tighten this up. Now you have this right here, and then you want to go ahead and tighten up this area. But first you want to go ahead and loosen up the back of it so you get to the throat of your saw blade just right to the point where you have it sticking out just a little bit over the end of the top top slot like this and then go ahead and then put a little tension here so it almost comes even at the end here and put that blade right through that top slot and crank it down and you should hear a little twang and once you hear that little twang, you know you're good to go. You don't want it too tight or too loose. You just want it sort of, sort of right in there. I angle my saw frame to the edge of the piece of metal and start cutting out. Nice, even strokes as much as I can. And I want to follow that outer line of the rectangle of the border of my bookmark until I get to the end. Now use a common found object around the house, a drill. With about an eighth inch drill bit, cut a little pilot hole through the negative area, that uh, shaded area, and put your saw blade through the back of it. And then we tighten it up as demonstrated before, put it through the little slot, little tension, tighten it up, listen to the twang, and now we're ready to move forward and start cutting. Just as we did before with the border, we're now cutting the interior aspects of the design. All those shaded areas are negative areas to be cut out. And we just repeat with the drill, draw a little pilot hole, and continue. 
just placing the blade through that hole and as we've done before just clamping it down and start cutting out the remaining spots on our bookmark. I should mention that many times you break a blade during this process and don't feel like you made a mistake it just simply happens and you just replace the blade as you put one in as we learned and now we're coming to the final stages of the cutouts now we need to take the paper off the bookmark we put the bookmark inside a container and pour some acetone on top this will remove the paper from the metal let it sit in there like about 30 seconds and then take it out and peel back the paper and it comes off revealing our design. Now I use a file to clean up the interiors. There's a little jagged area in each of the interiors and I move all around the design so they are removed and then work the edges so they're nice and smooth. Sanding is next in order. I use a piece of 220 grit sandpaper, cut out a little piece, put it in half, and then start sanding. Be a little abrasive, put a little pressure on this, and remember to do both sides. After a good sanding, I find another common tool around the house, a hobby knife. And I go through those little circles that I originally made and I highlight those by scribing them and scratching into them. And I go all around to each of those little areas that have circles and scribe them. I think this adds a nice little contrast and also a little zip to the piece. And now I want to make the shapes in the bookmark a little more distinct. So I take the hobby knife and I go through and just make those a little more noticeable by scratching in a line to make those a little more interesting. And just maneuver my hobby knife all around with a straight edge. We've come to the end of the project, and I think things turned out pretty well. I'm happy with the bookmark. There are a number of things I like to review. First, the materials and tools. These are the basic items needed for our project. We need a jeweler saw and saw blades, a piece of 24 gauge copper sheet metal. We need a file, some 220 sandpaper, a hobby knife, a pair of scissors, a pencil, stencil, acetone, a eighth inch drill bit or something close to it, a hand drill, spray adhesive, and a straight edge. These are items that are commonly found around the house, at least some of them, and others will come in your kit. You can find other supplies similar to these at hardware stores, perhaps grocery stores, hobby stores, and office supply stores as well. The last thing, and I think the most important thing, is the design. And I drew my design on paper. And again, like I said earlier, it's nice to draw a design on paper because you can see it before you commit it to the metalwork. And you can also change and manipulate things as you go. My project dealt with an abstract geometric thing. However, it's up to you to do anything. You can do something surreal like an airplane going through clouds. You could do something that has some kind of political or social content that's important to you. You can do something with planets. You can do something with a garden scene. You could do anything. Sky's the limit. Well, I hope you found the information presented in this short video helpful and useful. Now, 
I encourage you to make a project similar to what we had talked about of your own.